Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild a cylinder head on a Polaris Razor 900. This is part four of our engine rebuilding series for the Razor 900. Now, previously, what we did, we pulled the engine from the frame, we tore it down, we cleaned all our parts and inspected them. They're ready to go back together, and now we need to look at the cylinder head. So if you need to know how to get to this point, go refer to those videos. But for now, we're gonna disassemble this head. We'll inspect all of the valve chain components and the head itself. We'll replace any parts that need it and then reassemble everything. So I do wanna point out, this is a 2014 Razor 4 900 cylinder head. You wanna to refer to your model specific service manual. That way you get all the right specs. So let's go ahead and jump into this. To do this job, we have some safety glasses, rags, rubber gloves. We're gonna need contact cleaner. The Polaris manual wants us to use this carbon clean. We have some micrometers and snap gauges, pipe cleaners, gasket scrapers, screwdrivers, a straight edge. We have digital calipers, a torque wrench. We've got V-blocks and a dial indicator. You'll also need a valve spring compressor. This one's from Tusk. We've got a magnet, a couple of punches, hammer, a notepad to write down all of our measurements on. And then this Prussian blue is gonna help us take some impressions for the valve seats. And then if you don't have that, a Sharpie can work. It's just not as good. Now to disassemble the cylinder head, there are stands available, but we realize most people won't have those. So what we're gonna do is take a punch and we're gonna put this in our vise. And we're gonna carefully put the cylinder where the stud, the cylinder head where the stud normally goes. We're gonna slide it down onto that punch and it's gonna hold it in place and make it easy to work on. And if you don't wanna do that, you can tip it on its side. This is just kind of a convenience thing. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take our Tusk valve spring compressor and we'll compress these valve springs and remove the keepers. And I'm just using a flat blade screwdriver with a magnetized tip to get these keepers out. Now with the keepers out, we'll remove the spring and spring seat, and then we'll remove the valve, and we'll repeat that process on all of the remaining valves. Now, when you take these out, it's really important to keep everything in order. Now when you're taking everything apart, you want to pay attention to the problems initially you noticed why you're taking this apart. With our machine, we were burning some oil and besides the rings being bad, we think the valve guide se seals were going out. So on that, we're definitely going to be replacing these, but if when you did your leak down test, if you noticed you had a bunch of leak down, you can also do a solvent test. And to do that, you just put solvent down the intake and exhaust ports, you wait a minute, and then you're gonna look around the valve face and see if any solvent leaks past that. If it is leaking, then you're gonna to wanna to pay special attention to these valves and valve seats when you take the cylinder head apart. All right, to get these valve guide seals out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be really careful around the surface right here where our shim buckets ride. And the easiest way I found to do this is with needle nose vice grips. So I'm gonna carefully put those into place and lightly cl clamp down on that seal and we'll pull it out. Now this valve stem seal is a little bit different than most. Part of it is the valve spring retainer and we're just replacing the whole assembly. All right, now that we have everything laid out in order, what we need to do is start cleaning everything up. So we're gonna scrape this gasket. We've got a bunch of buildup where the intake boots go. Clean that off. We'll clean this cylinder head surface. And when we do this, you don't wanna use any air tools on this. We're just gonna use a little bit of Scotch-Brite and get some of this stuff off. And then we've got this Polaris carbon clean. We're gonna use that and clean the combustion chamber, all the carbon off of that. We'll clean the carbon off the valves. And then same with the exhaust ports. There's quite a bit of buildup on there. And we'll get all those parts cleaned up. If you haven't already cleaned the camshaft or other valve train components, you'll do that at the same time. The next thing I'm gonna do on this is remove these exhaust manifold gaskets. 
And after that, we'll clean these exhaust ports with that carbon clean. All right, now that we have our valve chain components and cylinder head cleaned up, we can now inspect the parts and see what we need to replace. So these cam gears, most of the time you won't be replacing these, but if you see any abnormal wear or broken teeth, you wanna get these replaced. We're replacing our cam chain, even though our gears aren't worn out. This is a good idea to do anytime you're in this engine. And this one we picked up from Hot Cams. Moving on, these cam chain guides, you wanna inspect all these. If these are worn out, the cam chain will wear grooves into them and you'll get those replaced if you have any grooves in them. All right, moving on, we're gonna check the cam chain tensioner. I'm just gonna press this down and make sure the plunger goes all the way in and comes back all the way out smoothly. After that, we have these valve tappets. Our manual doesn't give us any specs on these for measurement, but pretty much you just wanna do a visual inspection. If you see any scoring or damage to them, you wanna get them replaced. And if these are scored up, you also wanna check the matching bore on the cylinder head and make any repairs or replace the head if that's what needs to happen. The next thing we'll do is inspect the camshafts and I'm just gonna start with a visual inspection on these. So we'll make sure the cam lobes aren't rounded off. And then I'm gonna run my fingernail across these cam journals. And if there's any grooving that your fingernail catches on, then you wanna inspect that closer. And if you need to, you'll replace the cam shaft. Ours is looking pretty decent. So what we're gonna do is take some measurements both on the cam lobe at this highest point and then we'll measure the cam journal and compare those readings to the spec in the manual. If those readings are good, then we're gonna reuse these camshafts. Again, these measurements you just took down, you'll compare those to the service limit, and if any of them are out of the service limit, then you'll wanna replace these parts. Now, moving on, we're gonna inspect the camshaft holder bores. And to do that, we need to take these camshaft holders, we're gonna install them onto the cylinder head and we'll torque these bolts down to 89 inch pounds. And to take these measurements, I'm just gonna use a snap gauge and a micrometer. If any of the measurements you took on the camshaft holder bore are out of spec or beyond the service limit, then you need to replace the whole cylinder head. The last thing we need to do with our camshaft and camshaft holder caps is figure out our oil clearance. So to do that, you're gonna take your inside diameter measurement from the camshaft holder caps and that specific bore, you'll match up to the journal on the camshaft and you'll subtract the camshaft OD measurement from that, that gives you the oil clearance. Now, standard spec on this is two and six tenths of a thousandth of an inch. The service limit is three and nine tenths of a thousandth of an inch. The next thing we'll inspect is the valves. So something I wanna point out with these, they can bend and what causes that, your timing chain can skip time and the piston can actually hit the valve face and bend it. If that happens, you might have a cracked valve guide as well. So pay attention to that. And if you do suspect that happens, our manual, it gives us a measurement. It just tells us to check for run out in the middle of this valve stem. And as I rotate this one, this one's pretty dang straight. So we know we're good. The other inspections we need to make to the valve are this valve face. We wanna make sure it's not pitted or any burn marks. And sometimes these can get cupped out so if it's not cupped out, then you know you're good right there. And on the end of this, where the keepers go, you wanna make sure that's in good condition. And the end of this valve, it can get flared out. So make sure there's no visible damage up here. If all that checks okay, then we're gonna take six measurements on this stem. We're gonna do three coming up, and then we'll turn it 90 degrees and do three more measurements. Now, a quicker way to do this, you can put the micrometer at the smaller end of the service limit and then try to insert the valve. And you'll do that in all the locations we talked about. And if it doesn't go in, then you know the valve is still within spec.
Now we can check our cylinder head for any warpage. We'll use a feeler gauge and see if anything fits under our straight edge. You'll compare your reading to spec, and if it's above the service limit, then you know you need to get your cylinder head repaired. So we weren't able to get the feeler gauge under at any spot, so we know the cylinder head is good. Now we can inspect these valve guides, and to do that, you want to look down them, make sure there's no cracks or visual damage. If they look okay, you can next take your small hole bore gauge, and we're going to measure these in six different places, just like we did on the valves, and compare those readings to spec. Now one thing I want to point out, when you're measuring all this stuff, usually if these are worn out, you're going to have a tighter reading towards the middle. And that's why, we, that's why it's important to take multiple measurements because what happens as the valve actuates, these things will rock inside that valve guide and eventually the valve guide kind of gets an hourglass shape to it. So if these valve guides are out of specification, then the whole cylinder head has to be replaced. The next thing we'll do is inspect the valve seat. Now to do that, we're just looking for any pitting or damage to it. Sometimes they can be cracked. If the valve seat is damaged, you're going to have to replace the whole cylinder head. But if it looks good, what we'll do is check the contact area of how the valve actually sits against it. And the reason that's important is if the valve doesn't seal against the surface correctly, the engine's not going to run right. So to do that, what we're going to do We'll take a thin coating of Prussian blue and put it on this valve seat where the valve face contacts it. And then we're gonna tap the valve down on it lightly. It's gonna give us our impression and then we're gonna compare that impression to our specs and we'll know how well it's sealing. So we've got our thin coating on the valve seat. I'm just gonna take the, the valve and we're going to tap that down a couple times and we're just going to go straight down. You don't want to turn it because then it's going to skew your reading. So our contact pattern, it's looking like it's going a little far down on this valve face. So we're going to have to get our valve seats machined and we're going to get this ring centered on the valve face. So the other thing, the contact width is important too and we're actually going to measure that on the valve seat. So this valve seat width is really important. And what that is, is where the valve contacted the seat, that lighter area right there, we need to measure how wide that is. So to do that, I'm just using a digital caliper and I'm gonna take that measurement and compare it to spec. So the standard measurement here on the intake is 39 thousandths of an inch. You can, it can be all the way up to 55 thousandths of an inch. That's the, the service limit. If it's not within that spec, then again, you'll need to have this head machined. Now again, our cylinder head, we do need to get some machining done, but if your cylinder head is fine, then to get the best possible seal between the valve and valve seat, you can lap these valves. So how you do that, make sure the surface and valve guide are completely clean still. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of penetrating oil. I'm gonna spray this down into the valve guide. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this lapping compound and apply it to the valve face. And this stuff, it's really important that you don't get this on the valve stem where you only want it on that valve face. So now carefully, we'll install this into the valve guide. So what I've got, I just have a piece of vent tube. I'm going to put this onto the end of the valve stem. And I'm going to use this to twist the valve. They also make a valve lapping tool, but sometimes on these smaller valves, it doesn't stick very well. So this is just an easier way to do it. So now I'm going to twist the hose in my hand and I'm going to rotate the valve until it's going to start sounding smooth. It'll start out sounding rough. Once it gets smooth, you can kind of lift up on the valve and it's going to let a little more of that grinding compound in there. You'll do that a few times and then We'll remove everything and clean it up. Now we'll remove the valve and we're gonna clean up all that lapping compound. Once you have all the valves lapped, 
We'll go ahead and we're going to clean the cylinder head up with some soapy water. We're going to use the pipe cleaners to clean all the holes out, including the valve guides and any oil passageways. Cleaning it like this is important to do. Even if you didn't do the lapping and you had the machine shop clean up the valve seats, you'll still want to do this step. Now that we've washed the cylinder head, we'll put a little bit of oil on those valve guides. Now that we have everything cleaned up, we're ready for reassembly. So I'm going to take our new valve guide seal and just apply a little bit of assembly lube to it. And when I install this, just a, I'm using an 18 millimeter socket and this is the spring seat as well. So I'm just going to press on that and seat it down into place. The next thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of assembly lube and I'll apply it straight to the valve stem. And then since these valve guide seals don't go on as tight as some of the other ones, I'm going to use this 18 millimeter socket and hold it in place while I install the valve. Now that that's in place, I'll take the valve spring and we've got the top spring seat. Now this valve spring, I kept it in order, but these tighter coils, these are going to go towards the spring, the bottom spring seat. Next, we'll compress the valve spring with our compressor tool. And I'm just going to tighten this down until we can almost see those keeper grooves. And then I'm going to drop both keepers in place. And when I do that, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the back of the screwdriver. And that way the keeper sticks to it. Now I'm going to back off the valve spring compressor and I'm going to watch those keepers and make sure they stay in their groove. So if one of these keepers is higher than the other, then you know that other keeper is not in the groove and you'll need to put the valve spring compressor back on it and fix it. So Ours is looking pretty good, but to make sure these aren't going to come out, what we're going to do is take a punch and we're going to use a hammer. We're just tapping on the top of the valve and that's going to make sure these are seated all the way. All right, now that we have this valve installed, we'll go ahead and do the same procedures on the remaining valves. Now that completes this video on cylinder head reconditioning. It's really not too bad of a job to do. It's just a little bit time consuming. So be patient and if you need any parts, check out our website. We have aftermarket and OEM. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot of different helpful content on there, including part five of our engine rebuilding series. Thanks for watching.